tunnel from Gorky Park just started to play. How cool is this, huh? Mm. If I get a copy strike, well, what the heck, I have it. Many of you recognize the gate, probably. But today we start like this. I didn't request it. I didn't know this even takes place. I think at noon, wow, look how cool. At noon, the music starts to play and you have this magical moment. It makes you wanna dance, right? Like, you know, waltz. So, when this is playing, I will be finding a place to give you the news today. Today we will have two topics, however, three articles. Two will be from TAS and one from Onet Pell. I love this. Makes you want to dance. Gorgeous, no? Especially for my audience, everyone. So, I'm gonna talk about the topic regarding the traveling, especially for Russian citizens, and mentioning two people, my favorite woman lately, Maria Zakharova, and the man who's never sugarcoating, Medvedev, and who else I have? Oh yes, and then I have a story that probably will be the title of this video about what's really going on with Polish army at the border with Belarus. Not nice, not nice at all. So guys, let's start with news number one from yesterday, 9-11. And I apologize, I forgot completely yesterday to mention about the anniversary of 9-11. So if there is any of you who's watching and whose relatives or friends or someone that you know had been affected by that horrific event that I don't really want to discuss anymore at this point. Well, not anymore, at this moment I don't want to discuss it because I need some more guests to bring light to things many of you know already the story behind it so i want to say my condolences to you and this should never be forgotten by all means never and those who participated in this plan should face the punishment End of story about this. Maria Zakharova yesterday, 9-11, said that banning Russian citizens from entering European Union countries with their personal items is an uh, act of racism. So what's going on, guys, is this. Tell you, which I didn't know. I have this exactly somewhere here, one second. Yes, because then Medvedev talks about it. September 8th, sorry, I'm shaking. Didn't sleep well last night. September 8th, uh, what happened? Uh, European, the European Commission clarification dated September 8th bans uh, the import from Russia to the EU of goods listed in Annex 21 to EU Regulations number 833-2014, regardless of the purpose of use and the uh, duration of stay in the European Union, including cars with less than 10 seats, the EU emphasizes that it does not matter whether the vehicles are being used for private or commercial purpose. The list contains a wide range of all sorts of items from cellular cell phones and audio and video recording devices to suitcases, hold alls, articles of clothing, toothpaste and other hygiene shampoos and other hygiene products. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this? Look what they are doing. So now 
it looks like this is getting more and more intense uh, how they are punishing the Russian citizens on the borders of those countries and I will continue with the article but before I do this I want to share with you, you know I, I talk to a lot of people when I'm here you know I ask questions and they open up and they tell me how this really looks like there are many Russians who are still traveling to Europe it's a hassle you know you have to go around but they travel to Spain to France to um, of course they go to Turkey but Turkey is a different story it's direct flights I'm talking to European Union countries they still travel so now with this restrictions this this is going to be they're not going to go there anymore and it's stopping them it's, it's absolutely um, discriminating so she said this yesterday that racism sprang up in the west in very different forms at different historical stages once in the form of colonialism once in the form of trade imperialism then in the form of nazism fascism and segregation she said this in uh, vladivostok at the and she called the european commission exp uh, for explanation about this ban on entering the eu uh, with cars phones suitcases shampoos and other personal items from russia even those that are used like for, for personal reasons she said i believe that this is pure racism it's not a part of the sanctions it's not a matter of creating some additional benefits for the sinking EU economy either. This is racism at its first. And Medvedev said it a little bit uh, differently. And it's quite interesting what he said. Because also yesterday, Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev has called for suspending diplomatic relations with the EU in response to the EU decision to ban Russian citizens from entering the EU with everyday personal items, calling it a spit in the face, a spit in the face of the of every Russian. And now his words. What should we do about it? Certainly not imposed teeth for that retaliatory restrictions on EU citizens. We are not racist. So you see, okay, let me continue. We are not racist in contrast to many leaders of those countries who, whose relatives served in the SS. You see, you remember when I was recording this video about those Nazi files and I said, wouldn't it be nice to see the lineage the family tree of those readers right and you go back grandfather you know grand grandfather right and you just look at bushes right many people but that's exactly what he said that russia does not want to impose the same restrictions on eu citizens we are not racist in contrast to many leaders of those countries whose relatives served in the ss Moreover, those Europeans who travel here, that's me, usually have a love and appreciation for Russia. I'm so happy they know this. I know they know this. But this is the whole point. It's like, who comes here? People who appreciate this country, mostly in my opinion, who see the value here, who, who just want to experience it and see with their own eyes like I do and who feel good here right yeah how nice huh moreover those Europeans who travel here usually have a love and appreciation for Russia it would be better this is still his words it would be better just to suspend diplomatic relations with the EU for a while and to call our diplomatic personnel home that, that's what Medvedev suggested, commenting on this European Commission uh, clarification on the EU ban that I just told you about. And he also said here that uh, he criticized the EU leaders, sorry, one second, he criticized the EU leaders, calling them Brussels bosses who, he said, told all Russians directly and without beating around the bush you are second class people for us 
and the EU decisions is clearly not meant as just punishment for what Brussels sees as the criminal and aggressive regime in the Kremlin. Rather, this is a spit in the face of every citizen and suggesting measures to suspend Moscow's diplomatic relations with the EU, Medvedev noted that only such a move could make Brussels official truly afraid because embassies are traditionally evacuated before certain very specific events. Do you think, guys, it will go this far? Uh, side question here from me. Do you think they're gonna do this? They're gonna pull all the diplomats back? I don't think it will. Like maybe from a few countries, but I would like to know your opinion on this. I would appreciate in the comments. So continuing now with Medvedev's uh, words, he says, who knows what are these orcs from that immense Mordor? Who knows what else, sorry, who knows what else these orcs from that immense Mordor are cap capable of? And Medvedev asked sarcastically using a common uh, word in the West to refer to Russia and Russians equating them to the goblin-like human creature human humanoid creatures and this is from the lord of the rings so what do you think guys are they gonna withdraw they're gonna take the diplomats back i feel like some of of the of the personnel will be sent back to russia from a few countries for some time still surprised that with poland is like this which speaks for the level of patience they have with the shenanigans. Now let's get to the topic, which probably will be the main, um, the main title of this video. So, as you know, I said yesterday, US, NATO wants Poland to have one of the strongest armies, right? which doesn't really mean a deadly squad, however, it, in, in form of like how dangerous it will be, how strong, what it means is it's a danger for the country because you're not building this army for nothing. So this was my point yesterday. Sometimes when I say those things, I don't really want to explain every single detail because I think we are intelligent enough on this platform to get one another and that simply means, you know, you create this, so then Poland is the next victim, right? We know this. But you would think that if they want to have so many soldiers in Poland and to strengthen that army, they would take care of those soldiers. Well, it's not the case because there is a very new article, I think it's from today, from Polish portal, onet.pl, and I'm gonna read you the whole thing. The pictures, that actually were attached to this article, I will put on the locals and you will have the full article here in the link down below as well. So if you want to see it, you can click on this article and then you will see the images, but you will see on locals as well. The Defense Minister Mariusz Błaszczak, I don't have to say who he is, a mysterious rocket disaster in the middle of the forest. And the balloon, let's not forget the balloon, for sure from Belarus because they knew it, it's from Belarus. Okay. He ordered the preparation of a large grouping near the border with Belarus, who sent the balloon, right? He issued a political decision for which the military was not prepared. As a result, today's soldiers sent us photos of scandalous food rations and the conditions in which they are staying. This article is talking about in what conditions those soldiers are right now at the border with Belarus, Poland and Belarus. Soldiers have the biggest problem with food. Since the military is unable to provide it, the soldiers feed in Biedronka. It's, uh, if you translate it, Ladybug. It's like a grocery store, guys. How can I, I don't know what to say, what to compare it to. Um, it's just like very, very plain, it's not like 7-Eleven in US, it's not like that, okay? But it's very plain um, grocery store, you know, like fast, fast food, 
hot dogs, stuff like that. You know, food from the fridge, this kind of. So soldiers have the biggest problems with food. Since the military is unable to provide it, the soldiers feed in Biedronka, ladybug translation. The military also does not provide laundry. Can you believe it? The military also does not provide laundry. Soldiers wash their sweaty uniforms in city laundries. Well, all this money goes, right? They have money for this. Okay, I'm, I have to continue because I'm making too many comments in between. In mid-August, Minister Błaszczak ordered the General Commander of the Armed Forces, General Wiesław Kukuła, to prepare an army training group near the border with Belarus. The task was so breakneck that it was to include as many as 6,000 soldiers and everything was to be ready at the beginning of September. Today, the soldiers are already in the East. However, from the first day of their stay, they have been sending us photos from the first day. They have been sending us photos and information that indicate that the slogan, quote, wall behind the Polish uniform. We say, uh, wall behind the Polish uniform. Murem za mundurem, I think, in Polish. Anyway, like you stand firm, right? You stand strong and firm behind the Polish uh, uniform, Polish soldiers. That, that slogan promoted by the authorities which is supposed to be an expression of support for soldiers stationed at the belarusian border is more a political declaration than reality hello like what's new like really how many centuries we need to come to this realization now continuing with this tragic this is the part of the article food laundry accommodation so most of the signals from the soldiers concern food. We are currently in Kolno, which is the name of the place, as a tactical group sent by the Minister of National Defense. This is from the soldiers. In all the media, they boast about how they provided us with conditions, how cool, but unfortunately, this is not the case at all. The food is tragic. Practically every soldier spends his own money on shopping in Biedronka every day, and that grocery store every day. Their own money. Writes the soldier attaching photos of their meals to the correspondence. I'm so glad they are doing this. Like they are sending this and showing this to the people. And actually I'm glad that media is showing this. This portal actually reported on this. Okay, you know, I'm not saying it's perfect portal, but it's good to come across informations like this. Like someone has to show it. From the correspondence with the soldiers, we do not have launches. We do not have launches from the 1st of September. Food on cans for now, because the kitchen, kitchen does not work. The situation is drastically different from the one we have seen during numerous trips to the Ukrainian front. At every point, we saw well-stocked kitchens dispensing the soldiers needed amounts of high calorie meals. I think I have more, so just bear with me. These are not all the problems faced by soldiers on the ground. We do not have any laundry to wash our uniforms, which are sweaty after one day in this heat and tasks, and we have to wash them by hand in buckets and bowls purchased by soldiers. The laundry room is on site, but is not connected and is not allowed to be used. So we go to the city where we pay 20 zlotys, which is around $5, four dollars for each kilogram of laundry they write what the heck is this there are also problems with accommodation there are currently several hundred soldiers in Kolno in that place on social media from the beginning of the arrival of the army in the area of the border with Belarus photos such as the one below which you will see over there on the link in the link have been circulating, which indicates that many soldiers sleep outside, some on the ground. So here again, before I continue, side note, there is an image you will see there are soldiers who are literally sleeping on the ground. The strongest army, yeah? Give me a break. 
That's how they train the strongest army. Like they make them starve. What is this? It's like Napoleon's time again. Oh, they sleep outside, some on the ground. And here is another quote from a soldier, not from the letter. Today, the commander of the 12th Infantry Division is on visit. Mechanized division. They opened a container with treadmills and ellip elliptical, sorry guys, elliptical trainers. I'm not familiar with this vocabulary. Elliptical trainers for exercises. And so all the time it was closed and it was forbidden to use. The soldiers write. Oh yeah, it's from the gym, right? Because I don't go to the gym. So they, they brought the container with treadmills and elliptical trainers for exercises and all the time it was closed and it was forbidden to use. We sent a number of questions to the general uh, command of the armed forces about the living conditions of soldiers in the area of the border with Belarus. We asked, for example, about housing, nutrition, logistics conditions or the possibility of washing clothes. In response, we received the following email from the spokesman, Lieutenant Colonel Marek Pavlak. This is the email. As part of the WZZ Podlasie, the region, Operation soldiers from all branches of the armed forces serve. The main forces are, here are the names, supported by WOT soldiers. They are deployed along the eastern border of Poland in several bases in accordance with the concept of border support. On a daily basis, soldiers are accommodated in buildings and residential containers as well as military tents. Due to the ongoing military exercises in Belarus, Polish army soldiers are, tempor are temporarily training and stationed in the contingent area. After the exercises, they will return to their accommodation. So this is the end of the answer. The, and, and this article says, the answer does not address our questions about the conditions in which soldiers live. So there you have it. Can you imagine this? I mean, I mean, you can imagine this, right? But it's like, how, what are they doing? What are they doing? And so, okay, in a way, let me just tell you my thoughts. I will get my backpack and then we go a little bit. So you have some more views because my hand is really tired from oh okay in a way as ridiculous and unacceptable is this what they are doing if you look at this from a different standpoint it might serve some purpose some great let, let's have a greater bigger picture greater picture about it for example if people are now seeing this how they are treating those soldiers if the bleep hits the fan and they will be trying to convince people to participate in some activities, military activities, you know, I'm going with this. People will be like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not doing this because you've treated those soldiers like that. Ha you know, this, this in a way is, it's actually very good timing with this because many people, especially young people, who would consider maybe going to the army. You know, they advertise this army. I haven't talked about it before. They, they advertise the army as the economy is sinking and many jobs are gone and the small business owners are being destroyed. They are promoting the solution to the poverty and unemployment. Of course, you know, with people going to the army, you know? Wasn't it like this in Germany, guys? Wasn't it like this in Germany before the World War II? The economy was sinking and they were rebuilding the army, right? So to finish on this thought that I had now, perhaps this can show those young ones who feel like, you know, hey, I could go make some money, you know, and I'll be like a soldier, you know, like testosterone. I'm a man, I'm a man. We need real men, but I'm saying, like, don't be a meat that is sent to be killed. Like, for what? They will see those soldiers in, in uh, 
this region that are not able to be you know even sleeping on the ground not able to wash their own clothes having problem with food with nutrition and they'd be like man i'm not sure i just want like easy life you know i want easy life i want like get my money put the uniform on you know so these are just my thoughts i think i will end this video here some of you probably remember maybe you don't but those of you who were with me uh, when I was in Moscow first time, I actually sat right across from this lake and I had some birds that photobombed the video. So this is the first time I'm seeing this during... Still summer, yes? Or we already have... Yeah, still summer. Soon we have autumn, we have fall. Anyway, guys, I wish you a wonderful day. Um, all the links to those articles you find down below this video. Sorry if my hand was shaking because lately I have problems with sleeping. I wake up in the middle of the night and my mind is just like going in many directions and then I have problem to fall asleep again and then I fall asleep. It's like already morning so it's a mess. But I will I will find the balance again. It happens in life sometimes. So all the links are, like I said, down below the video. You see the pictures, you see the, what food they eat, how they sleep, and you can check it out, you know? Please join me on Locals, A-N-I-A-K, uh, 44.locals.com. You can follow me on Instagram as well. And, oh, someone is fishing. It's fishing. And join my mailing list to stay in touch, just in case. Uh, I'm also on Rumble, you can... What else I have? Oh yes, if you feel like supporting me, you can become a member of this channel. It starts with... Membership starts with 2 99 And then you also have Buy Me A Coffee page if you want to contribute to my trip to China. Send you lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge in saving the humanity. Bye everyone, have a wonderful day.